Hi, my name's Cathy Farrington. I'm from Google. I'm a technical program manager and uh, my previous background was designing smart buildings for uh, various companies uh, and uh, the ICT infrastructure for them. So today I wanted to talk around uh, about a standard for smart buildings. So smart buildings have been around for a long time. People have been talking about them for years, uh, but there's still very little standardization when you, you look across the various systems within a building. So anyone you ask in the industry on what a smart building is, they're going to give you a different answer. They're going to say some people are going to be very focused on energy, others will be very focused on space utilization or productivity or automating repetitive tasks. Um, but what a smart building is, is all of that. It's, it's everything that we want to be able to do in a building uh, to be able to link it and, and create the next level of, of what buildings are to us. And other people you'll ask, you know, what are the problems in a smart building and why has it taken so long to take off? Uh, these are kind of the three key ones that I've, I've seen, but there are, there are many others. Uh, the first being security. So everyone's seen all the IoT security issues out there, the, uh, the newspaper articles of the hacks and has things around IoT security. So that's a, a very big one that needs to be addressed. Uh, the second is scale. Uh, so buildings are still being designed in isolation. They're still being designed by the people that uh, you know the engineers or the architects or whatever that are on that specific building with very little uh, influence from from others relating to these systems uh, so how you scale that on a global scale or within an organization is really difficult so scale is a is another issue and the last one is insight so we've already got so many of these devices within our buildings there's so much of this data and there's no uh, way to be able to get insight from that data right now so I I keep asking myself, why are we approaching buildings in the same way that we have been doing building automation? Why are we approaching smart buildings in the same way we've been doing building automation for the last 15 years? Which is this, basically, all the different systems designed in isolation, designed in silos and separated um, with different uh, infrastructure user interfaces and, and data. So what I wanted to propose today is, should we not be approaching the buildings horizontally rather than vertically? So the basic concept is any device can talk to any application and vice versa. So rather than coming into a building and going, I'm putting this device in and it's part of the BMS, you just start thinking about devices as IoT rather than HVAC or, or um, lighting or, or whatever. And if that's the case, any application can then use that data that's coming out of that device. So going top to bottom on, on this, the, the device, and I'll go into detail in the next slides, but the device side means that we need standards, we need open, we need security, we need to start having a, a way that we can actually do this uh, consistently across all different disciplines. The connectivity platform, the, the key on this is, is security and making sure we can create connectivity in a, in a way that's not going to compromise enterprises um, because the only way it is going to scale is to converge those networks. On the data lake side, we want all the data that's coming out of these devices stored in a central place, which is pretty much cloud. Uh, so it's a cloud-based uh, data storage or data lake, uh, and being able to store those and, and make it accessible to any of the applications that want to use it. And then it's basically open to anyone that wants to make an application, use the data, use the system. Uh, any of the current uh, applications out there can be used or new ones. Uh, it basically uh, breaks the, the model of needing to understand everything in the infrastructure to be able to create the application in this space. So these are kind of the key learnings or success criteria I feel need to be achieved um, to be able to uh, hit the horizontal because uh, it's obviously a, a long-term vision because it's very different to the way we currently build and design buildings. So the first is the skills gap. Uh, so when you're talking about IoT and smart buildings, you're talking everything from construction, mechanical, electrical, FMs, people who are actually building and maintaining these buildings, all the way to your detailed IT systems. So people that are doing data scientists, uh, application developers, IT network people. And that's a huge range of skills that are required to, to build and maintain one of these buildings. And the second is the construction industry is built and designed on, on waterfall type method of program management. So you design something five years or whatever before you actually deploy it. And in that case, that means that a lot of your, your systems and your devices are locked in five years before. And if you go to any software developer and say, your software has to be exactly the same in five years, you're, you're going to get laughed at because that's just not how the industry works. So 
working out ways that construction and, and moving the devices that are actually selected and going to be used for, for device, any sensing, um, monitoring um, or control back into later in the construction program is kind of key to, to hitting this. The second one is security. So I mentioned that this is one of the, the big drivers um, and I've been to a lot of conferences and, and a lot of, uh, seen a lot of white papers and everyone's trying to solve security right now. And for me, the best ones that I've seen uh, are device profiling. So if you're an enterprise, you want to know what that device's purpose is. You want to know what data traffic it's doing, what it's supposed to be doing and how it's supposed to be operating. And you're not uh, as you know, the IT team or whatever, you're not going to know or understand that device. So the only person who can do that is the manufacturer of the device. So if the manufacturer provides a device profile, you can then limit that device down to what it should actually be doing and the traffic is actually doing. And when it's compromised, it can be isolated, restricted, you know, whatever you want to do within your, your security. I've put a URL in there. Uh, for a, a, a draft IATF standard called MUD and it's manufacturer usage description and it's basically doing exactly what I'm saying um, along with some other things but it, it's basically putting the onerous on the manufacturer to create that device profile. I've also put a link into a, a white paper that we've written at Google on application security requirements for IoT devices and this is about taking the best practice IT practices and pushing it to devices. So everything like making sure you're updating your devices to making sure you're using encryption or certificates or um, actually disabling things on the device that you don't need. Because so many of these devices have everything enabled just to make life easier, but from a security perspective, that's an absolute nightmare. So it's worth uh, reading and, and having a look at that uh, white paper to see some of the, the recommended best practices. And if you're IT, it's, it's basically the same kind of practices that have been in place for quite a while. On the device side, you think about all these devices in your buildings and how many are predicted to be in the buildings in the future, and who's tracking the life cycle of those devices? And when I say life cycle, I don't just mean the purchase and the decommission or, or that. I mean the hardware, the software, the firmware. When was it last updated? When is it going end of life? How are these different things um, being maintained? And the answer in a lot of cases is there isn't anyone that's tracking that kind of level of detail. So getting a robust asset management and life cycle management system around these IoT devices is really key. And the other one on the device side is that these devices have been built and designed around uh, protocols that are designed for local, that are designed for you know, being used within a building. If you're trying to connect these into the cloud or, or outside your building, you need to start moving towards the IoT protocols like MQTT rather than using things like BACnet because that kind of traffic is not what you want to be going over the internet. So a lot of what I'm saying comes to standards. Uh, and I think one of the key things that I wanted to, to kind of stress is that these buildings are being designed and built, not necessarily by the people who are using or, or, uh, or running them. They're being designed and built by you know, design teams who uh, want input from the customer but are not getting it. And if you think about like an IT organization, every laptop, phone, wire, mobile phone is, is highly regulated when you're gonna put it on your corporate IT. And then we have all these other devices that are not regulated and don't have company standards. And so it's really key to start saying, I want these to be open. I want these to be secure based on these requirements. I wanna own the data within my building. All those are, are really key to being able to get uh, a project moving forward. Um, and one for the device manufacturers. The, a lot of these devices are used to having really unreliable networks. So they've, they've actually tweaked in a lot of cases the standards, so the RFC, the IEEE standards, and said, no, we're actually going to not do it that way because we can't rely on the network. But when you're moving towards enterprise and smart buildings, the network is way more reliable. So you can't hold, like an example is DHCP, a lot of the devices hold their address too long. And that's not the, the way they should be managed. They should be designed and built the way the standards are actually uh, designed to do. <coughs> Connectivity is another one. Uh, so if we've got device profiles, the only way you're really going to be able to lock down your networks to the way that you need is, is designing around software-defined networks. And the second is to design your networks for users and devices. I mean, networks uh, for enterprises have been designed around people, but the number of devices that are going to be connected to those networks could potentially be significantly higher than the number of um, users. And the last one is around the data. 
So if we've got all these different systems, um, the only way we're going to be able to create actionable insight is to understand the relationship between the, the devices, what they impact, physical and, and logical, um, and also understand how that data is structured so that you can actually do something with it. So standards around um, schemas and, and relationships. Brick is an example, um, which I've put the link in where they're trying to do this. So there's lots of other things here, but I kind of really wanted to just say, as a company, whatever you're doing, you start with the standards. Start telling the people in the industry what you want and, and how you want it. And then that way you can actually do something with the building once you get handed it. Thank you.